Are we live? We good? CP, what up? What's happening? Yo, man, about time. This is this is. Don't do that. Due. It was no. I'm not saying we was due for this. That's all I'm saying. We was due for this. But let me let me let me give you a proper introduction though. We got Chris Paul. Let me see what I can say. We know he's an NBA All Star, president of the MBPA, um, co-founder of the Social Change Fund, co-chair for When We All Vote. You like that introduction, CP? Hey man, listen, I'm you gonna start traveling with me, brother. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> how much it's gonna cost me. Hey, listen, welcome, welcome to another another week of uh, what's in your glass. Let's start off with a virtual cheers. <clears throat> cheers, brother. Cheers. Always good to see you, my brother. Um, I've been I've been I've been meaning to sit down with you for for a long time, man, and for a minute. And um, I'm I'm glad you're able to join me for this. This this is a special one we're gonna do today. I, I can tell you that it's a timely episode presented by the Social Change Fund and, and Michelle Obama's organization. Uh, when we all vote, uh, this is mainly for or to have a real honest conversation dedicated to all the things voting. Um, as we 15 days away out of the election. So with that being said, tell me, tell me a little bit, tell us about your experience in, uh, with voting as of now. Man, my experience, um, <clears throat> I think a lot of credit definitely goes to my folks, to my parents, right? Like uh, we talk about it all the time. I was fortunate to have mom and dad and I was a young kid and saw them go vote, right? Like I remember they went up the street and uh, I mean, I tagged along maybe once or twice. Didn't really know much about it, just knew that they were going to vote. And then as we got older, you know, like I think about when we first came into the league, we didn't pay no attention to politics. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We were playing video games and all that stuff. And, you know, I, I think back to the 2008 election, I think that was probably one of the first times we really got a chance to vote as far as the presidential election. Um, and I remember I felt a sense of power, right? Like my voice was somewhat being heard, right? And I remember actually the act of going to vote and it just made me feel like an adult. <laughs> you know what I mean? It made me feel like I was a grown up. And over the years, um, it's been baby steps, but I feel like I'm, I'm learning so much more now. I was then, and we, we talk about it all the time. We got to keep learning. What was what 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 was your experience when when you the first time you voted? Like what you felt? Like you felt like you was doing something good. You felt like oh I just had to do it to do it because my parents wanted me to do it. Or like what what was your what was your your feeling? Man, that's a good question. Part of it was, you know, I need to do it, right? But I don't think I was educated enough. You know, like I don't think I knew enough. Man, I got in there and I was looking at that ballot. <laughs> One thing, something like to vote on. All these other questions was on there, and you like, mm, all right, I picked that person, or right, that name, name sound cool. I picked that person, and I don't know. You just start to understand that it's bigger than just the presidential election, right? Like the president is not necessarily determining what's happening with the school system in your in your neighborhood or the the stores that's gonna be on the corners or you know, the streets and all that stuff. That's not necessarily the president. And so it's it's a process. We 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 often talk about especially on here I talk about and we we've had conversations about it, the 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 education of voting and and, and how the younger generation and, and even the older generations too, right? It's we all need to be educated on voting. And and for for the longest we we've had a lack of education when it came to voting. That's why people you know, decided to not vote or they feel like they vote is not is not important. Let's elaborate on the, the educational part of when, when it comes to voting, how important that is. Man, it's important to have them conversations. Like think about us in our group chats. You know what I mean? Like how we talk about uh, so much. We laugh and we joke, but we we started talking about it like amongst us. You know what I mean? Right. About how, how important these different issues are to uh, our families, to our kids. Um, I mean, if you even think back to um, the way everything started with the ESPYs, right? That was in our group chat. That was me, you, 
uh, Braun and D. And that Absolutely. was like some funny meme or whatnot. And we do that too. But that was us having a real conversation about what life looks like, what social justice looks like. And uh, we build, we've continued to build, but this, this voting is, is real. And now, these conversations, because I don't know it all. When I got to join, uh, when we all vote with Michelle Obama, um, that gave me another sense of purpose, all right? And then Angela Rye, who, like, she has been an unbelievable teacher and talking to me about, like, voter suppression. And then you start reading up on books and you're like, man, it was all these polls in 2008. And then in 2016, they've been torn down. You know what I mean? So voter suppression is real. It's not just a joke. Like, they, they really don't want you to vote. So you, you mentioned, you mentioned Angela Rob, it's kind of your, gave you some information, kind of your, I don't want to say mentor, maybe she is, but somebody you right. look up to for information that, that, that gives you insight on voter suppression for per se. Right. How important, how important it is to have, and I would say in our position, we always feel like we got to figure it out, right? That's just the, that's just who we are. We've been able to figure it out uh, our, our whole career on the court. Uh, some things off the court, but how important it is to have that group of people around you or surrounding you, giving you that information and being able to have that dialogue where we all can still learn and be educated and, and, and be able to go out there and articulate some of the things that we may not we may not feel comfortable with, but we know that we part of these uncomfortable times. Like how important it is to have that team around you, or just and a group, or just somebody you could talk to. Yeah, yeah, and and the the part I think that usually makes most people uncomfortable is the feeling of not knowing it all, right? Like you don't want somebody to make you feel like you're dumb or you're stupid or something like that. Right. But sometimes that's just needed. I know I needed it. We all <laughs> I, do. We all I do. It. And so uh, to to be a part of when we all vote, and then I got a chance to talk to Angela, and i never forget. She was like running all this stuff off to me, and I was like, dang, for real? Like, that happens, you know? Because a lot of times, Right. So I've been fortunate enough, obviously, through the pandemic, uh, I got connected with Killer Mike. Right. And so hey, that's somebody else that's been just unbelievable in teaching and teaching. And it goes back to what we talk about all the time, Melo, and that I think sometimes we've become so dependent on our schools to teach our kids, to teach us. And at, at some point, we, we got to do the teaching and we got to teach each other along the way. What 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 would you what would you say? I mean, we we talking about voting a lot, but it's it's, it's important. What would you say to the people that um, would say that? Oh, I'm not. My vote doesn't matter. Man. We hear that. We hear that all the time. And I, I know for me, I was I was one of those people. You know, a, a while ago, where it was like my vote don't matter. Like it's not going to matter. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. Like, what do you say to the people that's making that decision and saying that today? I mean, yellow. We've been in. the it's, it's play guys that once upon a time that was like whatever whatever you know what i mean like they may feel like they're in a situation where they're good and they don't need to worry about that but the other thing is we got to tell our family members we always say like we point zero 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 one percent of our family that gets the opportunities or make the type of money that we make right so my thing is i get it first and foremost for the people who be like Man, what am I voting for? That ain't gonna change my neighborhood. That ain't gonna change, you know, my circumstances and what's going on. But we gotta understand that you do have the ability to do that, especially in those two-year elections, right? Exactly. When you when you vote on those uh, elected officials, um, whether it's the chief of police, all these different people they're appointed, and so the importance of community, right? The importance of community. Uh, I think the elect separated by maybe 27,000 votes or something like that. Like, that's not that many people in the grand scheme of things, right? So Absolutely we not. tell, like, think about it. We tell people, they tell some people or whatnot, there's power in numbers. So you you can change it. What, how, so you, 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 you walk, you, you, you walk, you're mail-in or you are uh, in-person voter? I'm an in-person, usually. But you know the way COVID set up, you know. <laughs> the way the way things are set up right now, I don't I don't really know about that. <laughs> but I, I, I've always 
I mean, I've liked going, right? I like going. Uh, it may seem like real childish or like a kid, but you get your sticker. You know what I mean? Like it's, it's something and it's, yeah. it's, it's something. So that, that leads, that leads to my next question. Tell us about when we all vote, because I know, I know that's a major, that's a major, major program campaign. Um, and, and, and you are a major part of that campaign along with some other prominent figures that's out there. So talk to us about your role with, in when we all vote and just how did that come about and why that, why that organization in particular? Yeah, so uh, when we all vote, which is an amazing uh, organization, um, it's crazy. You think about it, Yellow, and all the stuff that we have going on at times, when you think about being a part of something, you're like, man, do I have time, right? But you make time for the things that you want to be a part of. And I'll say this, too. Anytime our forever first lady calls, you don't even ask no questions. <laughs> you don't even ask no questions. You're like, oh, that bridge there? All right, I'm going I'm to land on my feet, right? She, she, and like, I'm so grateful for this opportunity because if I'm not a part of when we all vote, it just gave me a whole nother sense of purpose. And uh, that's, that's when we all vote goal is to, to encourage people, especially young people to get out and vote. What is what what I mean? I, I would love. I would like to know this too. What's the what's the overarching goal for when we all vote for the campaign? What's the overarching goal? Like what is what what is it? Shoot, the overarching goal is to get as many people out to the polls as possible, as possible. So figuring out ways uh, to partner with other organizations that are doing the work, right? So uh, when we all vote is working with uh, more than a vote. Obviously, they you know, helping us with our social change fund because we, we've we also identified other reasons why people can't vote. So voter suppression shows its face in a lot of different ways. And so everyone doesn't have the access to the polls, right? And that's why I'm going to live in HBCU. All these different things um, that we don't always know. There's people on the ground when we all vote. Uh, making things happen and understanding that it's not just about this election that's coming up, right? So even though November 3rd is very important, it's about November 4th. And how do we show up for the next election? That's, I mean, that's, that's, that's also, we talked about education, right? That's knowing, that's being educated on what, what really matters. And, and, and that, you know, is it about November 3rd? Yes. But it's more to it. It's, it's it's a lot more to voting and 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 being understanding and educated on just what's happening, right? And the, the, the you know the moral of the story is go out there and vote. Like that's the yeah. moral, of the story, right? That's the, educate yourself. Don't feel like you're stupid or dumb for asking questions on on something that a lot of us don't really know. Majority of us don't don't really know. It's not educated on that. So to everybody out there, don't feel. Like you're stupid or dumb for asking questions about how to vote, when to vote, where to go at the vote, who to vote for, because again, we are a community and we trying to we we trying to take care of everybody. Um, and understand it too, yellow, my fault. And understand it too. Good. When when you don't vote, that's almost a vote in itself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Like I know it sounds crazy, it sounds tricky, but I remember when I heard that for the first time, I was like, man, that kind of makes sense. <laughs> when you don't vote, you sort of making a vote. In, in the fact that you're not participating. How can how can people get involved? How can people get involved? Well, man, you can always go to oneweallvote.org, right? And just just see all the different things that's going on. And that's the thing too. Um, there's more than just voting, right? People can volunteer it in or anything, but as we always talk about, put it in your group chat. Put it in your group chat and see how people react. I mean, it depends on what chat it is. All these different chats you got, you know how different people gonna react. But don't be afraid to ask like the different props. Like we was talking about it earlier, like community is important. It's important to have those conversations. You ain't necessarily gotta be like crazy political and be like, well, I was watching CNN and they said this. I'm provoked for this part, I'm saying it, but just at least have the conversation so that it's not so overwhelming when you do get your ballot and 
Because, I mean, that ballot could look like the SAT, man. Hey, that's a fact. <laughs> it could look like ACT, whichever one of them you want it to look like. But it's, that it's, might scare me alone by itself just looking at it. Yeah, you want the Scantron, huh? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's one of those things, man, with, with anything in life, you know, it's preparation. You, you, that's, that's a great point. Prepare. You, um, and that, that, you know, also not to cut you off, but that, but that transitioned into something else, right? Because you, 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 you got everybody. You know, I say we get, we did it, but you should get a lot of the credit on this because you were able to get 90% of the NBA to, you know, register. You, 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 my brother, and you're going to shortchange us like that, huh? Okay. Right. Yeah. Cut, edit, fix that. <laughs> well, give me the give me the number. We over ninety five percent now. Okay. We, I, I, we, mean, we, I, I, we, see, I didn't we, want to say over ninety five percent. I rather you know it's okay. Ninety ninety five percent. Ninety seven ninety seven percent. Ninety seven ninety seven percent of the NBA is registered to vote because of you, your voice, your stance. And, and, and just the amount of attention that you you brought to that, right? And I remember sitting in the bubble having these meetings with you, and we was nowhere close to ninety, north of ninety five percent. You know what I'm saying? Like as far as registered voters in the NBA, now we're north of almost at hundred percent. How how did it get to that? How did you bring everybody together? What was your message? And and how do you feel seeing that? That we're at we're above ninety five percent. I mean, it's 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 crazy, it's crazy, and I like I ain't gassing this ain't cap or nothing, but it, it wouldn't have happened without you either. Like for real, for real. Like you know the conversations that we had, like the morning of uh, that second meeting that we had, and and being in that room with them guys. I think yellow. That's something we'll never forget. Like, never, all of us, never. I don't think we'll ever forget the conversations that we had to have, and that statistic that. Less than twenty percent of our league. I mean, you remember when I said that in the room? <laughs> when I said that in the room, it's one of those things. You know how it worked. Like when I said it, I sort of cringed a little because I knew that it was going to be like public knowledge, right? I knew everybody was going to know once we got out of the meeting. But I think everybody in there sort of started to look at themselves, like, "Who? Like, did you vote? Did you vote?" And it was crazy that next day when we, before we played games, felt like all the media heads had that one talking point, yeah. right? All the media heads, you know, they talk about the big meeting that we had and they'd be like, but only 20% of them voted in the last couple of elections, right? Yeah, of course. Even, and, and, and even though I felt bad, I guess that our league as a whole was getting this, it put a spark on us. You know what I mean? Collectively, it had everybody like, oh, oh, you know, we competitive and we like, we, we are now, um, it's been a lot of work for a lot of people and I'm, I'm unbelievably proud of our guys, but now what we got to do, yellow? <laughs> yeah. So uh, again, so that was my follow up question. Like, so we, we saw, we saw, we experienced firsthand how the, the power that we have as athletes right we 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 right. we witnessed that you know I, I, we was there i could say that we was there and we witnessed that firsthand of, of the, the amount of power we have we was able to change that number drastically of the amount of players or just nba um who's registered to vote so we got that we got that part how can how can we use our power continue to use our power in other areas right because we just show how powerful we are when it when it comes to getting everybody signed up, you know, and registered to vote, when it comes to, uh, you know, our, our boycott, protest, whatever, whatever we call that, our stoppage, um, we showed the power that we have. What's next for What's next for us as as far as utilizing the power that we have as as athletes? And that's that's a real good question, and I think that's why we got to continue to have the conversations as a collective, right? Like obviously, all of us have like our individual agendas, things that we care about personally, but collectively we have to decide. And that's why it was even important that we had that call with the governors, right? To let them know how passionate we are about the George Floyd Bill Act, right? 
And so, which is big, which is big, which is, which is huge. And yeah. we actually did a conversation uh, a couple weeks ago with Representative Hakeem Jeffries and just talking about what that looks like, you know, in order to flip the Senate and stuff, you know. So, all of this stuff that we talk about doing as players, the bubble really showed us how strong we are as a collective, right? You know, in our league, so much. We all so competitive that don't nobody do nothing together. Right. right. So I, I think it's gonna be a really turning point. Like I, when we sit out by the pool, you know what I'm saying? When we sit out by the pool, all us sitting out there talking, like having a glass of wine, y'all know that's unheard of, right? Because we all usually go our separate ways, but we got a chance to connect with each other, um, like never before. You, you, I mean, a lot of us are a lot of us are passionate about different things. <laughs> Uh, I think that's what makes you you unique, myself, you know, D, I mean, everybody, people, just athletes in general, people in general. But in particular, um, voting, right, and, 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 and just using your platform, you are very passionate about that. Did you always have that? Like, was, this, was that something that you were just like, man, I'm going to do that one day? Or it just happened naturally, like shit was happening, things wasn't going right, and... You stepped up, you stepped up and, and used your voice and used your platform and that just spearheaded, you know, the next thing that happened and the next thing that happened. Yeah, Talk to I, me about I don't that. think I was yeah, I don't think I was always passionate about it like I am now because I wasn't as educated on it. Right. I was just like anybody else. I looked at politics and was like, man, that's bogus, that's fake, it ain't nothing about money. <laughs> right? It's all it's all about money. That's what I looked at. And then right. like I said, when I joined when we all vote, I really started diving into it, getting more educated on why this happens, why that happens. And that's what sparked my interest. And then I realized that we got a platform. Like we we have people that we actually have a following a lot of people actually care what we think and how we believe. And so uh, what always made me try to be as responsible as possible with that type of you know weight is little Chris and Cam. <laughs> right? Is my kids. There are like look at the way he is on TikTok, or whatever. Like there's a, there are influencers out there that can affect how he thinks or how he views things. <laughs> That's right? a fact. He can get them passionate about a certain thing, right? So I was like, look, with the platform that I have, I can try to educate other kids who look like me, who may not be as educated like I wasn't educated, and maybe spark their interest and make sure they understand the importance of voting. It's you, you, you mentioned, you mentioned your kids at like those conversations is not, it's not easy. Right. And uh, I mean, it's, it's just not right. Because a lot of the things they don't understand and we, we got to figure out how to word certain things to them and, and how to bring certain stories, you know, to, in, in, in front of them and, and make them aware of what's going on. Because if we don't, we messing up this next generation. We're messing up the younger generation if all we do is just sit around and we complain, complain, and complain and talk to them about just the shit that we going through and how bad it is and the, and the, the tension that we live with today and so on and so forth, everything that we see. It's, it's, it's very fragile on the things that, on how we present that to our to the youth. Do you find yourself in that situation or you just find yourself, all right, cool, here, here it is, this is, this is what's going on. That shit is wrong. This is wrong. That's wrong. That's cool. Like, how do you find yourself doing that? Man, it's it's crazy because, like, I know what Cayenne. I know you draw experience experience probably from your mom, and I love your mama to death a lot more than I like you, just for the record. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I can I can I can only imagine sort of what it was like in in Baltimore. You know what I'm saying? Like the things that you might have been exposed to, or what moms wasn't telling you, right? right. And so. Growing up, even for me and CJ, like we knew we needed to know, but I'm sure because I felt like the news was all bad news, <laughs> right? And so it's funny, like when you have kids and little Chris is like that a lot of times too, he don't like to watch the news. But me and Jay, we made a decision. It's like, we're going to tell him. We got, we, we have to. And the first time that we really just started being basically uncensored with them was the George Floyd incident, right? So I remember being in the bathroom with Cam and showing her the video and sort of explaining to her that, you know, your brother is a young black man, right? And she started crying. 
she she had tears yellow and it was it was one of those moments where it was like we got to do this like we got to do this they got to understand who they are and that is different it's different as much as we want to say like you're not different you're not different like yes chris if you go somewhere if you do something you aren't chris paul's son you know what i'm saying you're just a young you're a young black man and something can happen to you at any second so i'm um, especially because my kids now they're, they're eleven and they eight. You know, I can I can have those conversations. Let's 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 talk about the uh, the the you know the the social change fund for a minute. Um, for, for those who don't, for those who may not, not know, uh, we we launched this early early in the year. Myself, CP, uh, D Wade. Um, let's let's I'll, I'll let you I'll let you jump into it. Let's let's share it with, with everybody how how all of this came about. Um, and, and, and what inspired, like what inspired us to start this? You want me to answer or you going to answer? <laughs> uh, I mean, I, I'm asking you the question. So. <laughs> I see, I, know, I noticed that. I noticed that, but it's, it's something that we actually doing together, my brother, so. All right, so I'll give you my take out after, after you. Um, you know what's, what's crazy, man? And I know we on here talking now, but uh, I put that in the, in the chat. I don't know if you've seen that in our little group conversation. Because uh, we did that interview earlier and it was so dope. And I think it's dope because we get to do it together, right? Like we all been doing so much separately over the years and we always congratulate each other, support each other and whatever we all got going on. But coming to do this thing together, it was dope because it's bigger than any one of us, right? And to see the amount of reach that we've had in short amount of, a short amount of time, right? Like when they presented us with that check early on that call, <laughs> I mean, they were they weren't gonna do that for just me. They weren't gonna do that for just you. You know what I'm saying? Cheers to that too. Right, and that's a fact. To, to know to know that that is going to a great cause and the stuff that we're passionate about, right? And to know that it didn't just stop with us three. The fact that we got Candace Parker, Donovan Mitchell, Michael Strahan, Chris Middleton, all these guys like. We're going with the social change will end up being bigger than anything that any of us are doing on the court. I think it's, I mean, for, 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 for me, it's, it, it was about us taking that next step and, and, and really making an impact where we have to. Uh, for so long, we've we've always said, "Yo, we want to do this, and we should do that." We got everybody got ideas, but also everybody has their different lanes that they want to attack. And I, I think it was just so much that was going on just in our community, in our society, in our country, in the world that it was like, "Damn!" Like now, we really got to come to the table and really make serious change. Like enough talking about it. Like, what are we really? What are we really going to do? Who we want to impact? Yeah. And let's let's target those. Let's bring everybody in and build this kind of social change community. And you, you know, you mentioned you mentioned um, you know a couple of a couple of other people that's that's involved with Candace and CJ and and Donovan and, and Chris Middleton. Like that's the next extension, right? We 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 want them to extend out to every to other people to get them on board because again, this is this is about community, and I think we really needed this, right? Because now. We're getting older. We're older. And I do think this would be so impactful and powerful that people will be talking about this later, years later, more so than they actually talking about the basketball part of it. I mean, the basketball part of it is it is what it is. Our careers is, is what it is. But this change, this social change fund, this is powerful. Like this is this is here forever. And yeah. I want I want people to understand why we really decided to do that and do it with us. And we also show that we could come together. No, no matter what, and, and and make change and get some shit done. That's why I really, you know, I I, I really like this. I, I actually love this social change fund because it's so much opportunity. What you're into, I may not be into. D-Wade may not be into it, or Donovan got some other things that's going on. Candace may be into something else. But again, we all here for one another where we can piggyback on, off of everybody and really make the change that we really need. So that that was that's my take on the actual social change front and coming off the heels of 
was crazy. Don't it feel like that was so long ago? But uh, SBC forever. I feel like it was a long time ago, man. I think uh, it's crazy. And I chat. We've been talking about it for a while too. We've been like, man, what's our action? You know, we came up with this idea, that idea, and I think, um, you know, it's better to be uh, late and right than than quick and wrong. You know what I mean? Right. And I think us sort of taking our time, figuring out what's the right thing to do. We perfect thing to do. I mean, that's sustainable, and I think that that'll last. Let's let, I mean, I, I really I don't want to ask you no basketball questions because we, we we deal with basketball and we talk about basketball all the time. Um, let's let's talk about let's talk about you being the president of the MBPA. And when I, I'm, I'm saying that, I'm asking that because. A lot of people may not know what goes into that job that, you know, it's 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 a lot. And honestly, Take a drink. I've known you for a long time. I've known you when you first became the president of the PA, but to be down here and dealing in the bubble and, and dealing even before the bubble and dealing with putting all this together and getting parties together and getting conversations started and seeing things through from the beginning to the end and knowing that some people are going to be upset and everybody's not going to be on the same page and some people will be happy some people's not that that part it, it, it's it is what it is but I, don't, I i think you don't get enough credit for being in that role as the president of the MBPA, because so much comes along with that. And you also got to, you got to cater to the players. You got to talk to the owners. You got to talk to the commissioner. You got to go out there and play. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how do you deal with that? Like, how do you manage that? Everybody can see who I talk to about this sometimes too. Huh? <laughs> uh, man, you know what? I, I, I think these positions, you never, you never sort of prepare for it. You know what I mean? Like, uh, you was on the executive committee for a while, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, you, and you realize that, I don't know, like it's, it's a position of service, you know what I mean? And and I don't know if it's uh, like a subliminal thing, like from my late grandfather, right? Or just trying to help people and trying to... Like, I, I know that I have a unique ability to be able to sort of connect people, right? But I also know that I'm, I love to learn, right? So this position has gave me an opportunity to learn, to learn a whole lot. Shoot, I didn't learn a lot about myself. You know what right. I mean? One of the biggest things I had to learn about myself is that I'm able to um, put ego aside, right? And that's hard. That's real hard, especially when you got to talk to somebody you really don't fool with like that. Like, oh man, I gotta talk to this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, for real, for real. And uh, being a part of the union has gave me an opportunity to understand, like, what's best for the collective, right? What's best for the greater good. And um, I don't know. It's been an unbelievable, like, privilege, right? Because it's not a right. It's a privilege. Chance to connect with so many guys that I would have never probably had a connection with over all these years. Like I always talk about Dre. I always talk about Andre Iguodala, and I always say him because I played for the Clippers. He was with the Warriors. I played for Houston. He was with the Warriors. Like ain't no way we should ever talk. Ain't no way we should <laughs> basically ever like each other, man. But none of this, none of this. As you seen when we was in the in the meetings and we talked, it'd be me and Dre standing up there. Like it's there's no way any of this happens or goes down without Dre. And so to know Anthony Tolliver, uh, CJ McCollum, uh, Jalen Brown, all these different guys that's on our EC, man, it's 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 been really, really dope. Let's 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 um let's talk wine for a little bit. Just a couple questions on the wine. Mm -hmm. I, I actually I actually want to know what what I know what you're drinking, but everybody else knows what you drink. What are you drinking? What's in your glass? And I'm In my glass, I got this one. I like one right? It's 06. 06. Nice little something. May may or may not be a little tipsy. It's, it's real hot out here right now. <laughs> but uh, 06. I think that's when I won Rookie of the Year. So yep, take it take it a little bit. 
Oh, so you 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 opened that you opened that for the, for you know you saved that for a special occasion, huh? The 06. Exactly. This is, this is a special occasion right here with my hey, brother. Listen, is, I, listen, that's what I was insinuating. I, pre I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Nice love, I'm, nice drinking love real. I'm drinking real. I'm drinking real, as as you know, CP. You know, you're you're a fan. You're a fan of you're a fan of this. Um, this is this is realm sellers. Abs it's called abstract. I mean, absurd. I'm sorry. It's called absurd. It's fan of realm. Realm is uh for me is actually a really great wine, big bold California wine, but it's very good to me. You know, honestly, it's very very good. You guys should try it. See, you like red or white? Yeah, this wine? is kind of. I like red. I like red. I have wine depending on what I'm eating or whatnot, but this is sort of like a dry red, right? Like a medium blend. Yes. I really like Italian wine. Really. Yeah, I I, I know that. I know that. On the line is good, very good though. On the line is 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 very good. Do you like um let me see? You said you like red wine over white wine. Um favorite region. Italian. Italy, I, I, Italy obviously. Right. Man, I can you know, you know, me and Jay went to, to Italy, what was it, a couple years ago? A couple years ago, that was the first time I've been. And I I ain't want to leave. <laughs> like favorite I, place in the world. Yeah, I, I, I play with Mauro Bellinelli. And so uh, obviously, uh, we we talked about Italy all the time. But then I got paired with Gallo this year, right? So anytime me and Gallo ate, went to dinner, anything, it was Sasakaya. It was Sasakaya. Sasakaya, yes. Yeah, I love that. I love Sasakaya. Do you? You like um, your champagne guy? Not that much. Not no. really. Little spritzer. You like spritzers? <laughs> he said little spritzers. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know. I know. Jake been there making you spritzers, man. No, nah, that's out. That's out. <laughs> that's out. That's out. You like old? You like old? You like old world or new world? Like you like? You like? Napa, or you like, you know, France, Bordeaux, or Burgundy, or not? I really, I really like. I go up there, so I also like French. I like Bordeaux. You know what I mean? I like that. I'm kind of balanced, man. I like rosés. I like you are rosé. Rose I, I forgot. I forgot yeah. that you are rosé. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, you know, like we talk about wines or whatnot. A lot of times it all it depends on who you with. You know what I'm saying? Like it depends True. on the vibe and what's happening who you with and what you're doing. And um I don't know. Yeah. What, what, let me ask you, let me ask you one more question. This 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 will say a lot. This question right here gonna say a lot. Um, Your answer gonna say a lot. Here we go. If we was at dinner and you have the wine mint, you have the wine list, what are you picking? Oh man, depends on it's us though. It's, it's us. It's us four. It's us right. four. It, we at dinner, best restaurant. Well, you got the wine list first. What are you picking? At the wine list first. Depends on the occasion. Depends on the occasion. And you what just the old six. Open the old six on the line for what's in your glass. So all four of us get together. I got the special. <laughs> But I, but I also, I also might start with a nice little like duck horn or something. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Okay. You know what? Yeah, you know, you know, with us, we may have something like you sort of build. You know what I mean? So, okay, so if you're not okay, yeah, you got then, the, you next, then you next. No, so my next question is, you have the you have the wine list last last bottle of the night. Great night. We've had some incredible wines. What are you? What are you closing it with? Let's see. What am I closing it with? Oh man. What am I closing it with? You know, I mean, I, mean, I, I got some like some '85 in there. The year I was born and whatnot. So you know how I am with Sasakaya. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. For sure. So you're close to the 85 Sasakaya. Yeah, 85 Sasakaya. Which is which is an um which is an unbelievable bottle. 
for sure. Yeah, for unbelievable. Sure. Listen, I I turned thirty five this year. That's what I had on my thirty fifth birthday. What you gonna have for your thirty six? It's a good question. What you spending this way? <laughs> <laughs> what are we gonna be for 36? That's the question. We send some, we send something over there for you. We send something over there for you. Yeah, where I'm gonna be for 36. You're gonna Listen. be in a boat. Where are we gonna be? <laughs> ain't no telling. I'll tell you that. There's no telling. But see, I, I appreciate you, man. I, you know, I ain't I ain't gonna hold you. I appreciate you jumping on what's in your glass, man, and, and you know, talking about uh when we all vote and social change fund and just your role as a, as, a, as as the president of the MBPA and just your impact that you're having on <clears throat> not just our community but the athletes and the, you know NBA players and athletes you know across the board in general. I'm sure a lot of people look up to you. Got you know they listen to what you got to say. They respect you, um, even though they may not like what you have to say sometimes or you know some of the things that you have to do, which is part of your job. But they respect you and uh, you. You, you'll, you'll be able to take that respect to your grave. So I just want to say I appreciate you, brother, always. I'm mm. talking, that's my second time talking to you in one day. I, <laughs> I, 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 I appreciate this interview. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> hey, listen, I appreciate you finally having me on What's In Your Glass, man. Listen, started, started to think we had a problem. We good. We good, champ. Yeah. Hit me, hit me up. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> love, big love, homie. Love, brother.